Hey everyone, I'm Joanna Hill, the artist behind J. Hill Fine Art, and today I am sharing with you a gouache and ink painting that will be part of the Kit Jones Art Exhibit at Macintosh Art Association in Darien, Georgia for the month of October. The Kit Jones was originally built on Sapelo Island, Georgia in the 1930s. The 60,000 pound boat was named after Catherine Talbot Jones, the wife of Alfred W. Jones, who was the friend of R.J. Reynolds Jr., the island owner and tobacco company heir who built her. The Kit Jones had performed many jobs in her lifetime. She served as a tugboat, a ferry, a freight hauler, and a fireboat for the U.S. Coast Guard in World War II. After the war, she was used as a research vessel by universities in Georgia up until the 1980s. In 1985, she was acquired by the University of Mississippi and moved to Biloxi for the next 25 years, where she continued as a research vessel in the Gulf Coast waters. When Hurricane Katrina came through in 2005, the Kit Jones was capsized, but yet survived. She was repaired and returned to use again as a research vessel. In 2013, the expense was too great to keep her maintained, so she was sent to the dry docks destined for salvage. 2017, she was saved from salvage as she was sold at auction, and plans began to have her moved back home to McIntosh County, Georgia. She recently made her last voyage across the states and was restored to her original design and now rests outside of the old jail and art center in historic Darien. For a more detailed history of the Kit Jones, you can go to georgiatrust.org. As previously stated, I am using gouache paint. If you're unfamiliar with what gouache is, it is a opaque watercolor. It's a water-soluble painting medium. It's a very opaque application. It dries with a matte finish. It's a very fun and forgiving medium to use. Gouache has been around for decades and it's been very popular among illustrators and comic book artists and magazine artists before digital photography because it was so easily photographed. My preferred supplies that I use for gouache all the time is Fabriano Artistico. This is a hot pressed watercolor paper, about 140 pounds. And as far as the paints go, I use several different brands. I've got Holbein, I've got M. Graham, Windsor Newton, and I think I even have a couple tubes of Turner. They're all pretty good. I don't really like the Turner gouache. I think my favorite out of all of them is the Schmenka. I find that the consistency is very creamy and the opacity is very opaque and the pigment is just very, very rich. And I would say the same for Holbein too. Holbein paints, their pigment load is really, really nice. Very good. 
a little pricey, but it's definitely worth the money. Now, as far as my process, I usually will sketch out my design on a separate piece of paper and then I will go over it with pen and ink. So I like to use uh, Micron pens a lot. The, they're archival and they are waterproof, which is super important because you don't want to put a water media on top of a ink that's just going to run and bleed when it gets wet. So very important. So I will outline my drawing and then I will retrace it onto my watercolor paper. I'll use a light box or sometimes I will use transfer paper. That way I can keep my painting surface very clean, especially if I want to have just a plain white background or you know something that's relatively light. I really like to enforce cleanliness in my pictures. I try to strive for good craftsmanship, so I try not to smudge anything and I try to put something underneath my hand that way I don't you know get my dirty hands all over my paper if there's one thing that wrecks someone's picture is having a smudge somewhere in negative space where it doesn't belong it's a very common mistake for beginners and it was one that I really struggled to overcome when I was in high school. I always got dinged on my craftsmanship because I wasn't very careful about where I was putting my hands or also how I was storing my picture in between the times that I worked on it. Once I've got my line drawing transferred onto my painting surface, I will redraw everything with the ink. That way I can actually see my line drawing underneath the paint. Even though the paint's very opaque, sometimes you can still see a faint line of that ink and you're basically making yourself a coloring page. So I will then go and find my darkest values. I'll try to color match uh, at the local color. So in this case, when I started with the bottom portion of the boat, I very carefully chose which red to use. And the best thing I did was I swatched all of my gouache paints, which gave me a small library of what colors I had available. And you can do this, and I totally recommend doing this, is making a swatch straight out of the tube and then make another swatch next to it mixed with white and then also mixed with gray. So you have at least three different varieties of one color out of the tube that you can pretty much get a good idea of what it's going to look like when you manipulate it with other values. So that's very helpful. And then I just kind of continue on with picking out the colors and then I will go over everything with ink and add some details. Macintosh Art Association will be hosting an art exhibit for the Kit Jones during the month of October. If you are local to Southeast Georgia, you should go check it out. 